Good day! This is Teacher Rowan. I'll be your guide in exploring Google Apps for Education, for teaching and learning. In Google for Education, teachers can connect and collaborate easily while staying on task. It gives teachers the freedom to spend more time personalizing the learning experience and less time managing it. Students can learn essential skills such as 21st century problem solving, which they can use it in their future careers. As such, the accessibility features will also help and assist every learner to do their best work. Google offers different useful applications that we can use to connect education to technology. This will help our teachers as a 21st century educators to innovate and find ways on how to make teaching and learning more exciting, engaging, effective, and flexible to the demands of the society. Let's re-explore the education experience by discovering new angles to create collaborate, and communicate as one. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Ang pagkatuto, huwag gawing komplikado. Sulong edukalidad. Mabuhay! Good day to all! I am your tutor, Madge. Welcome to Itulay, a free online tutorial an initiative of the Department of Education, Information and Communications Technology Service, Educational Technology Unit, ICTS, at EdTech. This program, this program is aimed at helping and assisting, and assisting learners, assisting learners from kindergarten, 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 senior high, senior high school, all, all alive, alive, bed learners. Bed learners. Aside from aside answering, from the, answering modules, the modules, the Itulai e to e to program, program which we surely look forward, 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 forward together with together. parents and parents and the Itulai e to e to e to e to difficulty and ease, ease, and ease and meet and learning new knowledge, new knowledge and, skills. and skills. So, so let us prepare let our modules, prepare our mod, pen and paper, pen and paper. Ready your mind, ready your mind, and hear worthwhile, worthwile, interesting lessons. Interesting lessons. Let us now study, study, now study together with the volunteer, volunteer, online tutor. Tara na, tara na. Hi everyone, good afternoon. It's a Tuesday and that means to say it is Choose English Day. And you are with us. I am Tudor Nova. And I am Tudor Alvin. So, hello senior high school learners and just like what the Tudor Nova mentioned, so today is Tuesday. It's always a new day and an amazing day. All right, so feel free to interact with us on the comment section. We would love to make this class as engaging as possible. So to do that, we want to hear what you think about our discussion today. So let's have it an interactive and a meaningful discussion together. Uh, feel free right. also to key in your names and what school you come from on the comment section. Okay, and we welcome you all to another fun-filled and exciting learning journey in oral communication in context. So together, All right. today, we will learn and win with Tudor Nova and Tudor Alvin. So, yeah, hey, it's a brand new day, Sir Alvin. By the way, it's your birthday. <laughs> you celebrated <laughs> birthday the other day. So we want to greet you a happy, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, thank you to all our, um, actually, um, Thank you for all those um, who greeted me no, in my very special day, to all our participants, to my students, to my colleagues, and our e to life family. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. And I guess um, Tudor Alvin has a lot of wisdom that he can share with us, especially in this session, because you have been teaching oral communication for quite a while, right, Sir Alvin? That's and right. it's a thrilling session today because this is going to be a merge of our two main topics for week seven and week eight. And we have decided to merge it in one session for this day. Uh, yeah, that's right. So to our um, e to life participants, so please, okay, brace yourselves because um, and interact um, actively because we'll be tackling two topics in one. So. Um, to better um, understand, okay, um, each topic, so you better um, um, comment down your responses and um, virtually interact with us. 
Okay, that's great. So, shall we begin, Sir Alvin? <laughs> I think so. So, but before yeah, that, so let's energy. have our uh, gay students from Santa Maria National High School, from San Mariano National High School, okay? We also have here, I think, um, from, okay, from your school, Tudor Nova. Hi, hi to all of my students from City of Bugo Science and Arts Academy. You know, all of them are really interactive, but of course there are some students who really stands out, especially during our interactive sessions because they definitely comment their answers on the comment section as fast as they can. And I'm just really impressed by how they commit their time and effort to be with us here in the class. So hats off to you guys. And also our students from Bekuran High School, from San Machas High School. And oh, Sir Jerry is here. So hello, tutors. Um, ito lay na, choose English day. So yeah, <laughs> see you later, um, tutor Jerry, okay? Okay, now so, let's begin, Sir Alvin. Okay, yes. this is again oral communication in context and we are at your service, Tutor Nova and Tutor Alvin. So today, uh, as what we have mentioned earlier, it is going to be a merge two topics for week seven. It's types of speech styles and types of speech acts. Okay. So we wanted to merge this because... Bakit kaya si Alvin? <laughs> what okay. do we have in store yeah. for them? So, syempre, hindi lang naman sa face-to-face -face may break, even in our online platform. Because actually, next week, I think, is the, the actually, beginning um November 1, I think, is the All Saints Day. So, maybe we need some break. Yeah, we need yeah. a Halloween break for us to do trick-or-treating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Have you ever so, done that, Sir Alvin, trick-or-treat? Um... Not yet. I mean, it's not a trend in our uh, in our community. Um, but how it's about good. Maybe we could do that virtually, right? Well, yeah, I true. haven't done that yet, too. But it will be exciting to do that here in Itulai soon. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. there will be. And, okay, uh, so an online Itulai, um, an online um, trick or treat. So for this session, our targets are or our objectives that we must accomplish first, we must able to distinguish the types of speech style. The second one? Second one is we need to identify the social situations in which each speech style is appropriate to use. Okay. Distinguish types and classification of speech act. And lastly, we need to respond appropriately and effectively to a speech act. So these will be our targets for today. So hope you will interact and collaborate with us from 4 o'clock until 4.40 in the afternoon. Yes. Now, so last time, we were also able to do a meaningful lesson with our students. Now, let's do a quick wrap up or a recap for the last week, Sir Alvin. Okay, so last time we talked about the types of speeches, okay, the types of speeches according to purpose and according to delivery. That's why we prepared uh, a, just a simple game just to, to have, uh, for you to review what we have discussed or we have talked about last time. So I think the mechanics is just um, the same of um, the, the recap last week five. So you'll just be writing O or commenting P in O um, after the item number if the statement is true, otherwise you comment X. Okay. So, That's right. O for true, X for false. So quite easy yeah. to remember. So hopefully they can uh, put their comments on the comment section with the corresponding number two. Okay, right. let's do it. Yeah. Okay, to Renova, I have the first one. Okay, here is our number one question. The types of speech according to delivery are impromptu speech, persuasive speech, extemporaneous speech, and manuscript speech. Ooh, what do you think? Is this statement true or false? Again, if it's true, write O. And if it is false, write X on the comment section. We will be waiting for your answers. Oh, we got our first um, student answered on the comment section from Jessarol Jessarol Pumbaga. She said it's O, which means true. Should we reveal the answers, Ralvin? Okay, the answer is it is X. Are there two different Yeah. Why? Because the types of speech you to deliver are impromptu, extemporaneous, manuscript, but not persuasive. Right? So this is 
Okay, so what made this false was because we mentioned persuasive, but it's not really included in the speech of the wording to delivery. So that's why yeah. this statement is false. So, baka na overlook din ka kala na direct direct. Like tricky, parang trick or treat ata to Sir Alvin ah. Kapahalo ng statement. Okay, let's do number two. The primary goal of an informative speech is to promote the thoughts, feelings, actions, and behaviors or attitudes of your listeners. Okay. Um, is it true or false? Wow, so that's the answer up. is, okay, it is false because maybe... This is actually referring to persuasive speech. Because we have here the keyword which is influence. So the main goal of informative speech is not really to influence you in a certain stand, but basically just to express a certain information which is factual based on truth. Okay. Okay, let's turn on for the number three. Okay, here is my turn. Oh my gosh, it's Squid Game. Okay, last question is extemporaneous speech has no advanced preparation and is usually for a person knowledgeable about the subject. Ooh, what do you think our dear students? Is this statement true or false? Okay, we now got here some answers in the comment section. Some of them answered X, but the others answered O. Okay, Okay, it is X. It is false because I ask if you can remember still. It is the previous speech. There is still an advanced preparation, right? That it's very minimal. Okay. Very minimal preparation. You will be given. Uh, some of our contest will be given maybe two minutes to outline your thoughts. So it's not really advanced preparation, but um, it's just giving you an outline of what you're going to say. Meron pa rin naman siya, okay. Meron pa rin. Ang kapanggit na walang preparation, it's the impromptu, right? The impromptu speech. So, okay so well done and well done yeah hey i think our students uh, most of them got perfect score so that's worth celebrating and worth emulating as well okay, okay. so from our previous topics okay parang ito na talaga ako last ng ating quarter one <laughs> okay and but that's, that's okay it's quite yeah, a journey okay, diba? it's yeah a very um like you know, um fruitful fruitful learning journey so this week we'll be focusing on the types of speech styles and the types of speech acts so in this session we'll be answering the following questions first what are the speech styles of course we will also be answering the second question what is the speech act theory how about what are the types and classifications of speech act and lastly, how to respond appropriately to speech acts. So all these questions will be catered in our discussion today. So let's get it on. Okay, let's get the ball rolling. So let's have first the types of speech style. But first, what is a speech style? So according to Mr. Martin Juice in 1976, a speech style refers to the form of language that the speaker utilized, which is characterized by the level of formality. So let's just right. put it in this way. The, 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 the speech style is the manner, okay, or how you speak with other people. And the speech mm -hmm. style can be classified according to the the level of formality if the words or the um how you talk how you communicate with them is too much formal or, or too much informal. informal yes right and by the way sir alvin just for our viewers to know uh, maybe they have a question in mind 
why do we have to study this one? Why is it so important to learn speech style? Well, a speech style is important because we need it in order to relay the message of our speech well. And also, speech style tends to relate to how a person would take what we say and when we use certain styles for certain conversations or speeches. So we are able to convey our thoughts in a better manner. And it's the use of speech styles. So we really get to know, uh, we really should know about these different speech styles for us to communicate better and to yes. convey our thoughts better. Precisely, Tutor Nova, because um, there is no um, single way of speaking or communicating with one another. So to better and to effectively communicate or to speak with um, with our addresses, with our listeners, we have to take into the to consideration what style we should use. Should we be formal or right informal. okay yeah it's also with the manner of dressing right sir alvin we can also try to have this logic like when we go to a certain event and we wanted to dress into something when we try to choose uh what we should wear based on what the clothes we have in our closet so of course we we are also going to uh weigh in things should i be formal or should i be informal what would be the perfect style that I can wear onto that event? And okay. same with communication, we should also have a speech style. And we are categorizing these speech style to formal and informal. Yes, so to specify what are these speech styles, so they are categorized into formal to the, let's, so we'll begin with the most formal down to the informal one. So speaking right. of the thinking of the style, it's just hashtag appropriateness. We have to mm -hmm. speak appropriately in the right context and using the right speech style. So the first, I think the most formal is the frozen style. Frozen. Let it go. Formal, of course. That's under formal. And we also okay. got consultative. The casual and ang pinaka hindi intimate. formal. Okay, the intimate. So Let's discuss we will them. try to unlock these terms later, and you will know why we did ca ca have this category of informal and formal. And we will also try to get to know the different examples under these speech styles for us to explain better and for us to understand it more. Okay, now let's have the first one. Yeah, the first one is the frozen style. Alam nila mig tayo. The frozen style. Actually, uh, wala kinalaman yan sa lamig either. Uh, yeah. So, the right. frozen style is also known as the fixed speech. Kaya nga frozen, na stuck. It is static, okay? It is the you highest. You can't change it anymore. Yeah. It is unchangeable. It, remain, it remains unchanged. So, in this style, it is. Um, often used in respectful situations or formal ceremonies. So remember in the frozen style, it is called frozen because this is a type of or a style of speaking or a speech style wherein you are not allowed to change the, the line, okay, the particular script or the yeah, the particular code because it is fixed. It is static. Mm -hmm. So let's right. So they need to remember if it's frozen, it shouldn't be changed as it is. Okay. And let's have example these examples. Are, okay. right. The pledge of the allegiance to the flag or yung panunumpa ng katapatan sa watawat, sa watawat ng Pilipinas. Ng Pilipinas. Even Tama. the pledge of the flag. Yeah, so um, hindi po na siya dapat i-change, right? So oh. hindi naman pwede na nag- uh, panunumpa ka tapos hindi mo sa ulo so ang ginawa mo is nag-try ka ng nag-add ng certain words na hindi naman, you know, hindi naman doon under sa Pledge of Allegiance so uh, it's not going to be a frozen anymore kasi you tried to change something. So frozen style is given na. Yun na yun. All you have to do is to say it. You don't have the right to change it. That's so frozen. This, style. this is another example. The singing of the national anthem or the lupang hiniran, babayang magiliyo. So, tuli tuli yun. Well, hindi ka, hindi mo kapag kinakanta mo yun, you cannot change any word. No, baka kasuhan ka pa kapag may maling uh, example, di ba? Sa mga singers o who, who sing, okay, that song. Instead, pag malilang ang dang tono, di ba? Or what more pa kaya kung ang lyrics ang pinalitan. So, it is. Tama 
frozen, it is unchanged, yeah. it's fixed, it is static. So this is the it's first time. And I think what they also need to remember, the key points here is that if it is used in respectful situations and, or informal ceremonies, so yan yung frozen style. So hindi mo siya dapat i-change kasi it's, it's a tribute. It's a for formal situations. It's used yeah. for ceremony, not for personal um, situations. So ayun yung frozen style. At ito ang nauna kasi ito talaga yung pinaka most formal kasi talagang dito talaga, di ba? Standing up straight, talagang focus dito, bawal ang medyo Yeah, uh, hands forward. May pa-hands forward pa nga sa teacher ng face to face eh. Right? Kasi uh, when we respect uh, certain situations or kapag may ceremonies, uh kaya kailangan talaga we should also pay respect through the posture that we are going to have in the situation. So ayun, kaya siya tinawag na frozen style. That is right. So, yan, may mga examples sila dito, no? Sabi ni Kyla, the school creeds, the, yeah, the, Lord's, the Lord's prayer. prayer. Yes, di ba? And shout out sa mga students natin from LFG di Jamantina National High School sa Kabatuan East District, Isabela. Hello po sa mga um, guro at estudyante natin dyan sa Isabela. So, I think that's have the next one. Okay. Now the next speech style is what we call the formal style. Formal style uses formal words and expression and usually a one-way straightforward speech. Now the examples for formal style are number one is the state of the nation address. So uh as you have witnessed yung sona ng ating pangulo or even sona ng mga principals right sir alvin may mga yes. sona din tayo sa ating schools so ito uh, the words that are used here are basically formal words so one way straightforward speech siya because um it's expressing about a certain uh situation like um here's the state of the nation address it's about the situation or the current status of the nation. So the goal of that is to inform the audience. So we should use formal words in this type of style. Now, uh, the second one is the pronouncement by the judge. So formal style din ito kasi we are attending a formal event as well. So ito kasi pronouncement by judge Sir Alvin, uh, ano yung mga uh, minsan or the common things that pinipronounce pronounce ng judge? Okay, maybe the verdict, okay? Mm -hmm. If um, the decision of the court, okay, regarding the, the fact, case. I, I declare you guilty. Oh, so yes. Yun. So those and I think are... before nila mag give ng verdict, may mga sinasabi pa sila before that, like Tama. summing up about uh, the trial na nangyari. So formal okay. style set siya because it, it follows a certain proceedings. So that's yes. why it is under the speech style, formal style. The formal. Okay, and what malito. I... Frozen yan? It's not because, example, the sauna. Pwede Isa na siya change, di ba? Yeah, Hindi naman pwede, pwede na yung sauna na ginamit ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte ay gagamitin ng susunod na Pangulo. It yeah. changes uh, when the situation calls for it. So, so same with the pronouncement uh, by the judge, it can also be changed. Uh, it depends on what the verdict was or what was the, fi uh, the case that they are uh, having a trial on. So, so kaya siya, it's not under frozen, but it's basically formal style. Okay. So the th third speech style is the consultative style. It is basically unplanned speech since the speaker uses the participation and feedback of the listener. So in the consultative style, so the speaker will supply background information while the listener participates continuously. I think we're on the middle part of the okay of the level of formality. So in the consultative style, it is not too formal, but not also too in too informal. So in the middle, right? It's just uh, the perfect and and the neutral. <laughs> yeah, the neutral one. So example here is a communication between a teacher and a student, and a communication between a doctor and a patient. So just like when you're communicating with your teacher. Um, I don't think you're you're very much formal in the words or in your language when you're talking with them. And you're not too informal na parang barkada mo lang siya, nakausap mo. Hindi yeah, yeah. 
Diba? So it depends about what type of relationship you have with a person you are talking to. So it's consultative style because you both agree on some things. And it's also not a linear one because it it has uh, feedback. So you both, that's why nga it's called consultative kasi my word na consult. So yes. you both can try to say things like as it is and how you want your relationship to be. Uh, it could be na... You, you could be formal if you think that you have this formal relationship with each other, but you can also try to be a little bit informal if you wanted to make it not really stiff uh, in your communication between the two of you. So, ayun. And then the doctor and patient also, Sir Alvin, is consultative style because, as you know, uh, may mga certain instances na maybe hindi naman gaano kaseryoso yung uh, naging diagnosis ng doctor. So maybe okay lang naman na hindi maging super formal yung kanila. Yes. At saka uh, hindi ka pwedeng idaan ni doctor sa formal words kasi baka yeah. hindi maintindihan ni patient ang mga terms especially using the the medical jargons of course. So the doctor here in under the consultative style will be using the layman's term which is um and um which can be understood of course true. by the patient. True. And shouldn't be using jargons na yung nakakaintindi lang is the people na under sa field na noon kasi baka Ooh, hindi ma hindi ma uh, absorb ni patient yung gustong express ni doctor so it should be consultative style and, and then plan speech okay, sa siya. ating mga examples here, here uh, kaya consultative so one the one the the other person is asking maybe for information because the other one is more knowledgeable about that game okay, in right. here the student is consulting with his or her teacher, teacher. Hmm. Yeah, the patient is consulting or communicating with the doctor so that is right. the consultative style so Jordan Nova that the fourth one is the casual style now the casual style is also known as informal style it is usually used between friends or even insiders who have things to share like when you hang out with your friends, you don't really be uh, using some formal words with them. So you have to be casual, like um, how you communicate with them. So yun yung casual, like classmates and friends, like you, know, you are having social interaction or may mga events. So you just have to have fun. Yan yung casual style. Kapag you build a certain relationship, a deeper one, na you think it's okay not to be too formal. So this is what we call the casual style because it is informal style. Now, with, uh, let's have the fifth one, Sir Alvin. Yes, and syempre, casual is the informal style. The question is, meron pa bang mas informal dyan? The answer is yes, and that is the last speech style, which is the intimate style. So from the words of intimate, di ba? It is used in talks between two very close individuals. Very, the term is very close, not just um, the... Not just, just um, people prayer, you, diba? you normally you know Talk um with interact me. with so yeah. your intimate style parang yung level na best friend kasi iba yung level ng friendship with your friends lang your colleagues pero si intimate style it's the level of friendship you have with your best friend yeah, so super. minsan may mga certain gestures tayo na tayo lang yung nagkakaintindihan like parang may pawink wink tapos yeah. like alam mo na yung ano yung ibig sabihin noon kaya it's intimate and considering the the proximity of the of the or the proxemics of the communicators here, they are too close when they are communicating. Has magkadikit ni mukha, magkadikit na yung yeah. They're very um yung katawan, no? They are very um talaga makikita mo yung closeness, yung intimacy nga, di ba? And True. Wala pang social distancing. <laughs> oh, oh. Kidding. Okay. But yeah, so ito for example yung couple, di ba? When we try. Yeah, siguro, uh, they can observe that from their parents, diba? Mm -hmm. When they have problems, uh, may mga parents talaga na they, they talk through it and they, they normally uh, talk over that uh, before going to bed or maybe after dinner na silang dalawa lang so they could talk about the things and you know, propose solutions to the problem. So that's intimate style. Yeah, now so next is parent correct. and yeah. child. Parent and um, Grace Vito, parent and child, right? That's right. So when you're communicating with your, actually, it depends. Okay, upon the closeness, because there are some people here who are not that too close or not too showy, right, with their parents. But there are some still, okay, who are very close. Okay, um, opening things up with their with their parents and it shows intimacy so they're using True. intimate style and in this style no formality di ba? kahit ano nga yung mga salitang gamitin nyo pwedeng pwede as long as you understand each other 
as long as it's not offensive to the other person's uh, end. Tapos, as we can see here, Sir Alvin, since in, since it is intimate, uh, yung gestures is ano din, uh, very iba siya with the other um, uh, speech style that we discussed earlier. So as you can see, here's a parent and child. You know, pwedeng So yeah, it uh, it uh, it means they're very close. They're actually um, maybe talking about a very sincere topic. So yan yung intimate style. That's the intimate style. So those are the speech styles. Remember, frozen, formal, consultative, casual, and intimate. So let's now proceed to our second topic, which are the types of speech app. So to learn Nova, what is speech app? Okay, so speech act is an utterance showing the speaker's aim and the influence it has on an audience. A speech act uh, utterance that a speaker makes to achieve an intended effect. Now, also, uh, siguro kini question din na ating mga students who are in the comment section, why is it important to know these uh, speech acts? Because earlier, we were able to give them an overview about the different speech styles. So people can perform an action by saying something, right? So through speech acts, the speaker can convey physical action merely through words and phrases. And the conveyed utterances are paramount to the actions performed. So may expect kayo na mangyayari dito sa speech act. Okay, we will try to get to know more about this with the given examples today That's and categories. Right. So, the speech act is an utterance. Utterance or the you sinabi mo, di ba? Why did you say that? Because you you have an intention. May gusto kang mangyari. And gusto mo yung makita through a result. Kaya nga, speech yeah. act, di ba? Speech. And then there is a corresponding action or reaction after you say it after you uttered it so to better understand what speech act is so let's study the speech act theory so according to john langshaw austin in 1962 so he is a philosopher of language and the developer of the speech act theory so according to the speech act theory of jl austin there are three types of acts in every utterance given the right circumstances or context. Diba? So, so these are? So these are? Locutionary act, which is through utterance. The elocutionary act, which is about your intention or the purpose, why you wanted to say things. Now, the result is what we call the perlocutionary act or the effect. The effect after you say it. So that is about the different uh, speech act theory. Again, locutionary, elocutionary, and perlocutionary. Okay, there to better go. understand each speech act, okay, according to the theory of John J. L. Austin. So let's have them one by one. So the first is the locutionary act. It is the actual act of uttering or saying something. Okay, so kung ano mismo sinabi mo? Diba? the words you 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 have spoken okay the 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 words you you uttered okay so this is the locution or the locution the, the locutionary act kung ano mismo ang sinabi it's mo. through speaking right the yes. locutionary act now the elocutionary act is what we call the intention or the purpose the social function of what is said like um you are thinking about um what you wanted to say what is your intention of saying it now si locutionary act yung ano yung gusto mong sabihin para yung iniisip mo mangyayari siya so yan yung elocutionary at locutionary act now and we have the last yes, one the perlocutionary act nagsalita ka kasi nga merong elocutionary di ba may dahilan and you want may that. gusto kang okay. mangyari may gusto kang mangyari at yung pangyayaring yun or that that um, effect is the perlocutionary act or the consequent effect of what was said. So after you said or after you uttered a specific utterance, you're expecting yung kausap mo ay magbibigay a certain action, right? So magre-react siya, he will be acting, and that is the perlocutionary act. So let's just put it in this way. The locutionary is the utterance. The speaking. Yeah. 
the illocutionary is the intention and the, or the purpose act is the result or the effect okay or yeah. the outcome. so Remember so, these two words para hindi siya confusing kasi diba yung mga words na to locutionary, locutionary, perlocutionary alam mo medyo baka ma- ma-confuse kayo kasi yung mga words na yan nari, 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 diba? Yeah, so you have uh, to uh, remember these keywords so it's easy for you to remember these. Okay, now let's have this uh, more simplified example, Sir Alvin. Yes, para to ma- better understand, okay, the three types of speech act according to Austin. So let's have this one. The utterance, anong sinabi? Intention, anong gustong mangyari? And the result, anong posibleng mangyari? Okay, what must, right. what's the possible outcome? So, but of course, before you speak, diba? before you utter a certain expression, you will be thinking first of your intention. Why would you yeah, say what it? What you want to happen. Yeah. So maybe our intention here is to turn over. The intention here is the speaker requests the addressee to wash the dishes. So yung, siguro yung uh, situation na to is nakita nung person, ang dami palang hugasin dito, tapos medyo lazy ako to do it myself. So ang gusto kong mangyari, yung intention ko is siya yung maguhugas ng plato instead of yeah. ako ang maguhugas ng plato. So, so yung intention mo is you wanted the other person to do it for you. So yeah. yan yung intention mo. O yung so, illocutionary. Illocution, yes. So this is the illocutionary act. Ituloy natin ang kwento. Yun ang gusto mong mangyari, di ba? That's your intention. So ngayon, Itadaan mo yun sa pagsasalita. Magsasalita ka na ngayon. Ano kaya ang sasabihin mo? What will you say now? Okay? What will you utter now? Para maganap yung iyong intention. Yung iniisip mo. Siya, tama? Ng right. Plat. Okay? What will you say? Comment down. So, ayun. Ano kaya ang sasabihin kung gusto mo mag-request na isang tao gawin ang dishes para sa'yo instead of ikaw mismo maguhugas ng pinggan? Could you try to comment sa comment section? Ano kaya yung pwedeng i-utter mismo ng tao? May nakita na ako. Tutor Nova. And that is, oh. ano sasabihin mo? Please do the dishes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And that is what we call the locutionary act. Okay. Yung apat na salita na, please do the dishes. Okay? Yun na mismo yung locutionary act. So, yun na yung uh, magpipresent or represent ng iyong intention o yung naiisip mo na ipagawa. Yeah, for your, for a desired result. Now that you already spoke uh, yeah. what your intention is, you know, please do the dishes. Now, ang mangyayari is, munta na okay. tayo sa result. Ang mangyayari result. is, Okay, sige, tutor no ba? Ito talaga ba? siya ng pinggan. Sasabihin mo yun sa akin. Sige. Hmm. Please do the dishes. Okay. So, after I, okay, I heard. I heard it. Okay. Tutor Nova, I'll begin to wash the dishes. And that is the result. At yun na ang yeah. per locutionary act. act. Okay. Gets okay. ba ang types of speech act? Locution, elocution, and perlocution. So, please um, give us a thumbs up so that we'll be having an idea. Okay? Or heart reaction. So let's have yeah. another example to turn over. Okay. Let's have another one through the next slide, please. Okay. Okay. Alimbawa. Now what you have. Okay, yes, go, Sir Alvin. Yeah. What if your intention now is example, this is the context. You 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 saw your classmate, ang baon niya is uh okay, a cake, no? Ooh, tapos favorite okay. mo yung cake. And gusto mo yon. Okay? Gusto mong bigyan kanya ng slice. Okay? A slice of that cake. So, yun ang gusto mo mangyari ngayon. So, yun ang intention mo. So, that is the illocutionary act. Di ba? The question now, ano ang sasabihin mo? What would be your utterance? Okay? What would you say? Gusto ano mo ng kaya? cake? Ano kaya yung sasabihin? Ano yung exact words na gusto mong i-utter sa person na yan? Kasi gusto mo nga ng slice ng cake niya. Mm. Okay. So to Pwede turn over? Pwede naman in a polite way, right? Okay, yeah. you can say it this way. Wow, a cake. Does it taste good? Well, indirectly speaking pa. Indirect pa. Parang nagtatanong ka pa. Masarap ba yan? 
Yan yung minsan ginagawa natin nung bata tayo, oh, right, oh. Sir Alvin? Kapag may kumakain ng gusto natin, tapos we're too shy to say it directly na, can I have some? Minsan yung ginagawa natin ay, masarap ba yan? So, ganun. So, tapos since you already uttered it na, does it taste good? So, the result is that... <laughs> that <one> bagay yan. <laughs> okay, the address will let you taste it or not. So... Yeah, because... The way you said it was like asking if it tastes good or not. Not really directly asking that person to give you a slice of it. So it's the perlocutionary act. So ayun. So that's why for today, also Sir Alvin, we will be discussing the different types of speech act. Yeah. Right? Do we still have time? Yeah, I think we'll try to do it. Okay. Sige. So um, actually, in the elocutionary act, there is no single intention. Why do we speak? There are a lot of intentions. There are a lot of purposes. Why do we utter a particular expression? That's why here, John Sear classified the elocutionary act into five distinct categories, which are assertive, directive, commissive, expressive, and declaration. So, sige. Let's have them Let's one get it on. Okay. Now, the first one is what we call the assertive. Assertive is a type of elocutionary act in which the speaker expresses belief about the truth of a proposition. So the examples of assertive, as you can see there on the right part of the screen, it's stating, insisting, concluding, putting forward, suggesting, describing, and of course, asserting. Now, the examples that we have under the assertive elocutionary speech act is, say for example, nakita mo si Mark, tapos nag, um, Mark is actually holding a blue umbrella. So what you should do is that's to basically describe what you saw. So Mark is holding a blue umbrella. Now that is the assertive elocutionary speech act. Now the yes. second example Another that we example have here is, is um, I think you should just wear the hat and forget the necklace. So wala lang sinabi mo lang yon, suggest mo. Okay, wala um I think you should just wear the hat and forget the necklace. So it is suggesting. Okay, so this is another example of assertive utterance and the last is that will be all for today. That's concluding. Now, you have to remember if it is assertive, my certain proposition ka na nagsta-stand on ka. So, assertive is that it's you, your personal belief. And it won't matter ano yung belief ng iba. Kasi gusto mong sabihin yung ano yung pinapaniwalaan mo. Now, that is assertive elocutionary okay. uh, In the assertive, may gusto ko lang sabihin, may gusto kang ishail, may gusto kang, uh, what do we call that? Um, I propose, something like that. So, that's the assertive um Okay, let's have let me have the second one, the directive. Okay, it is a type of elocutionary act in which the speaker tries to make the address perform an action. Unlike the assertive, in the directive, you um nagsalita ka, but then may gusto kang gawin ang nakikinig. At yung sinabihan mo dapat gawin niya talaga kasi you're being uh, you're trying to project a directive elocutionary speech act. Um, uh, now, okay, examples, examples of that are are when you're making a request, you're asking, you're pleading, you're begging, daring someone, commanding, ordering, challenging, inviting, and advising. So this all um, fall under the category of directive elocutionary speech act. Example, Tutor Nova, when I said, can you please be quiet? What will you do next, Tutor Nova? <laughs> I will be quiet because he okay. asked me to do it. He asked me yeah. to be quiet. Now that's so, directive. Second that's example directive. is don't leave the house without wearing a face mask. Face okay. mask. Oh, now that's commanding because wearing, it's part okay. of the protocol to really wear a face mask. Now, so the third I'll be wearing one is, face mask. Okay, the third right. one is I implore you to please spare my friends from punishment. So that is bleeding. Okay. Begging. So, and uh, maybe the person you're talking to would really be convinced. So, so if it's a man, through your words, through these utterances, um, which are directive, um, may may gusto kang okay. Tama. so the number three to turn over is commissive. Now, commissive is a type of elocutionary act which commits the speaker to doing something in the future. Now, directive is actually um, directing the person to do it right away. But the commissive is trying to let that person do something, but in the future, 
It could be sooner or later. Now that's commissive. You wanted them to commit to it, but you don't want them to do it right away. You can let them do it in the future. That is commissive. Now the examples are planning, vowing, betting, promising, and offering. We also got some example scenarios here or sentences. Yeah, like, like this I falls will, under vowing. Like I will, I will never, never go, go out, out without rubbing alcohol from now on. So from now on, so it starts today until the future. So yes. that is vowing. Now the second Not one is I'll never break your heart. So that Ooh. is uh, okay. Force. Promising. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> promising. So it's like a she or he is promising it today. The, the moment uh, he spoke, he spoke these statements. So he promised it today until the future. He will do it until he's alive. Now we should schedule another meeting at exactly 10 a.m. It's planning because the moment he said that, maybe it's still around 8 o'clock in the morning. And then the scheduled time is at 10 o'clock in the morning. So it falls under commissive. Something you do it in the future. You're promising. Okay. You're planning. So that's commissive. The fourth one is expressive. Because we're done already with the emotional expression as function of communication. Right. It's a type of elocutionary act in which the speaker expresses his or her feelings or emotional reactions. Mula sa puso, di ba? Mula sa damdamin. Example, Ooh. apologizing, <laughs> condoling, deploring, congratulating, thanking, and welcoming. Examples are, please, no, forgive me for getting upset about a simple thing. Apologizing is, it should be, um, it should come from the heart. Right. So right. It's, it's, it's merely expressing what you feel at the moment. And that is uh, the function of speech act uh, under the illocutionary. So that's expressing yourself what you feel. So like this one, when you wanted to express your condolences, you can say, I'm so sorry for your loss. So that is expressive illocutionary act. Now, the that third one is... I appreciate the help you gave me during the quarantine. So appreciation is thanking. Okay. Thanksgiving. So, the fifth one is declaration. Now, declaration is a type of elocutionary act which brings a change in the external situation. So, uh, we can have the examples under declaration. We have bidding, blessing, baptizing, passing, firing, excommunicating excommunicating, sentence, nominating, and even appointing. Now we have some um, example sentences here, like we have here under nominating. So maybe the context here is you are called to attend a meeting. And all, all of you there were just um, attendees. Lahat kayo attendees doon. So pumunta kayo doon, attendees lang. Tapos biglang may election pala. Tapos may nomination. So ganito yung magiging statement. I would like to nominate Janelle Roldan for class president. So you now have a title there. Uh, a person wanted to nominate you. So perhaps kapag nanalo ka, it will bring change na magiging president ka. So yan yung declaration. Now the yeah, second so one is, have is may the Lord be with you. So that's a blessing. So, di ba pag sinabi sa yun ng um, ng priest yan, so parang feel mo na na oh, um, nasa yun na si Lord. You're guided okay. by the Holy Spirit. You're guided right. by the Holy Spirit. And another is your contract is terminated effective next week. Filing at talagang may magbabago talaga sa buhay mo because after that utterance, you'll be jobless. So in the declaration, we're expecting a change. Okay. The moment na sinabi yung um, utterance na yun, yung expression na yun, um, there, it May brings a change, it brings right. a change in the external situation. Right. Like say for example, Sir Alvin, yung my wedding, yung my pronounce the priest, right? Na I now pronounce you man and wife, a husband and wife. Tapos before nung wedding, you were just uh, boyfriend and girlfriends pa or yung fiancé pa. Tapos nung nagpronounce na, uh, you now are legally married. Now um, the situation there is changed from... Uh, being fiancés, now you are now legally married. But bear in mind that only those who, who has the authority to declare something will make it um, effective, will make it, um, you know, what you, how, how do I say it, viable or valid. You're right. So we have that, the term performative, okay? A particular speech act will take effect only if it is uttered or spoken by a uh, by person the right authority. person, okay? The right person in the right time and in the right place. Example, no? Um, example, declaring a martial law. Of course, declaring a martial law will um, 
will bring or cause change in the in our life okay depending where it was right um, so sino ba yung uh, person in authority na pwedeng magdeclare ng martial law it's only the president, president. hindi yung ordinaryong okay. tao na for yeah. example kung yeah. Mr. Alvin sasabihin na yeah. yeah. yung martial law <laughs> Alba, diba? Alba, hindi yung magdeclare effect kasi we are yeah. just teachers we don't example, have the right neighbor, to do it okay your neighbor has no authority also example your neighbor mo si si Marites di ba hindi niya pwedeng sabihin oh na, Aling Marites ha <laughs> i declare martial law of course Na paano si Aling Marites? Parang, you will not believe, <laughs> di ba? Walang pagbabago. Unless, mm. ang nagbigay nung declaration na yun is the right person. Tama? Is the right person. Same as to with the, with the, what do you call that? With the wedding. Yun ang pinakahihintay eh, para magi yung kasal talaga, mag-asawa. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Hindi naman pwedeng um, yung kaibigan mo. Di ba? Right. Yung ninang. Di ba? It should be the priest, the pastor, or sino man ang nasa authority. The person in authority. That's right. So, those are about the speech acts. Yay! We were able to finish it just in time, Sir Alvin. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. let's remember. <laughs> so, the types of speech style are beginning with the frozen. first formal, frozen, formal, consultative, casual, and intimate. How about the types of speech act according to J.L. Austin to Ternova? We have the Locutionary Act, we have the Elocutionary Act, and lastly, we have the Prolocutionary Act. So those are the things that you should remember. And uh, of course, we have the types of Elocutionary Act, like what we have discussed just minutes ago. We have assertive, we have directive, and then we also got here commissive, expressive, and then the last one is declaration. declaration. So hopefully so... they were able to have a distinction between these topics we discussed today, Sir Alvin. Yeah. So just in time, we need to give them a round of applause. Yep, yep, yep. The... <laughs> okay. Okay. So Okay. So <laughs> So I, I think, think they... everyone, okay, enjoy our session today. So we do hope that you learned a lot, okay, from your learning adventures. So all right, thank you so much, and please um, join us in our last week of session. That's going to be November 9, two thousand twenty-one. You will be experiencing a whole new adventure with me and Tutor Alvin because that will be our recognition day, and we have some yeah. amazing, thrilling prizes that we have prepared for you. So yeah, hopefully. Save the date. That is on November, November 9, 2021. Okay, see <laughs> you on that. Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. see you. And so again, um, this is Tutor Alvin. And I am Tutor Nova. And this is okay. Oral Communication in Context. And we and are now. Remember, be the best in oral communication in context. All right, thank you so much. And goodbye, our dear students. Yeah. Till then, happy learning. Ang husay naman, natapos ang husay mo ang naman. tutorial session, natapos kasama mo yung tutorial yung session, kasama na, yung delayed tutor. Na, it's may bago ka bang natutuhan? May bago ka bang natutuhan? Na yan, gamit ang I-share na yan, hashtag gamit ang Eplay, hashtag level up. Eplay, huwag ka alis ha, dahil may susunod pang programa na pwede mo rin panoorin at salihan. Dahil naghihintay na ang iyong mga tutors. Happy learning dito sa Itulay! <laughs>